Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. I have a mixed bag for you today. I not only try some viral sewing and quilting hacks, I also try some not so viral <laughs> sewing and quilting hacks so you don't have to. In today's video, I have a bunch of tips that I share with you too. If you have a hack that you would like me to try in one of my upcoming videos, leave me a comment down below and tell me what the heck is. Stay till the end so you can find out what today's word is so you can win some Sewing Channel merch. Enough talking already. Let's see if these hacks are genius or if they're just downright insane. I know you've all seen this viral sewing and quilting hack, right? The concept here is simple. Instead of using a seam ripper to unpick those mistakes, you use an electric razor. <laughs> And I ain't gonna lie, friends, I was skeptical going into this one. I compared two models, a smaller one that took batteries only and a larger version that had a charger that went with it. I didn't try any of the attachments that went with any of these products. I just used the blade, so to speak, that was on it. As you can imagine, the $20 one did have a little bit more weight to it. It did come charged already, too, as a side note. I think sounds bother me because that smaller one, that noise, I did not like the sound of it, but that's just me. Getting right into it, that smaller one, does it work? It definitely did cut my threads, but it took me maybe two to three times going over that same thread in order for it to actually cut through it. So far, I'm thinking this could be more hype than it's worth. Then I tried the larger razor. I am showing you my very first time trying both of these products right on camera, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> this larger razor seemed to plow right through on my threads very quickly. For my second time through with this large razor, I thought I could go way faster if I anchored one side of the fabric down, sort of like an extra set of hands. Now I had the advantage by pinning my fabric to the wool mat. And boy, was it easy. I slid that razor right through my threads. The verdict on this one is surprisingly two thumbs up. This next hack has to do with precision. You'll need some graph paper and you will need some washable stick glue, which was not in the original hack video that I saw, but you do need it to help keep that paper stable on top of your fabric. You definitely could use this graph paper on your quilt top like this to make sure that your lines were perfectly straight or your angles if you were trying to do a certain design and whatnot. Here I drew out ahead of time on the graph paper making a path that I could follow. I don't know if it's just me or not, but I do not like tearing paper out of my stitches. The verdict, it works okay, except for that tearing out part. <laughs> this next hack I found it would be a game changer if it worked. As quilters, we starch our fabric so that there's no shifting within the fabric as we build our blocks together. This original video said to literally dunk your fabric in whole bolts, she said in the video, <laughs> into the half liquid starch and water. After it was done soaking, she said to put it in the dryer for 15 to 20 minutes. While those are drying, let me show you my method how I starch so we can compare the two. I use cheap can spray starch. I saturate the top of it so that all of it is nice and wet. Huge tip here, watch this salvage edge shrink as I spray it wet. If you buy pre-cut fabric, like the strips and the squares, you never want to spray starch them because they will definitely shrink on you. Best practice, always starch first and then cut the fabric pieces that you need. For my method, I let them air dry underneath a ceiling fan for about 20 minutes. Here are the liquid starch pieces fresh out of the dryer. So I'm attempting to iron them as you can see and pressing them is extremely difficult. These wrinkles are not coming out. So much for starching fabric in bulk. What a bummer. Let's see how my starching technique compares to the whole bolt liquid starch technique. I have to say that pressing the wrinkles out with my method is way easier. Oh my word, it is effortless. Absolutely a clear winner. My technique wins. 
<laughs> it's important to note that this liquid starch may work differently in a spray bottle, but I'll leave that to you. Here's an extra tip for you. Get a spray can trigger for your starch. You will not be disappointed. Let me blow your mind with this tip. Have you ever wondered where those white flakes come from after you starch and you go to press your fabric? It makes for a real hot mess and you can't get those little waxy pieces off. And I tell you, that's what happens when you press your fabric with wet starch on it. Remedy for this, wait until it's dry or almost dry and then press it and you'll get not one white flake. Do you have this presser foot? Have you ever wondered what that black knob is on the side of it? It's like a spring button. It presses in and out. This presser foot is actually a leveler for thicker fabrics. Watch the presser foot as I sew. It's flat and then when it comes up to where it's thicker, the front of the foot starts to ski slope. Once you see that ski slope, you're going to lift your presser foot up, press the button, and then let your presser foot back down while holding the button. Continue sewing. When it levels out, the button will pop out. Wait for it. There you go. Pretty cool, right? Some videos out there tell you to put things underneath the back of your foot to get the same result. Now you don't have to. This sewing straw hack, it's supposed to help us keep our bobbins and our thread spools together. I have a similar store-bought notion that does the same thing. Before we try the straw hack, let me show you this tip. Did you know there's a little slice in the bottom of our spools to help us keep those strays in check? On your bobbins, what you wanna do for this tip is grab that loose thread all the way to one side and then pull it taut and it slides right into the spool, keeping that stray in check. On to the straw hack. So you're going to cut equal parts from that stretchy end on both sides. Add the bobbin on and then where that bend is, bend it so that the other half of the straw goes into that hole with the initial other half of the straw. Friends, these straws were so cheap, oh my word. I think if I had stronger straws that it would work way better. Let's see how this did corralling a bunch of bobbins together. It worked pretty good for having a few bobbins on there. With a stronger straw, I would give this hack a thumbs up. Overall, I could totally go either way with this one. This next sewing and quilting hack landed me right in the curling iron section at Walmart. <laughs> Simply put, the concept for this flat iron is supposed to help us get our seams on our quilt blocks nice and flat. While I was setting up to show you this hack, I was thinking to myself, I really do hope Walmart takes this back as a return. <laughs> That's how sure I was that it was not going to work. This is the first seam I tried it on. It was a bit awkward at first. I did one side, then the other side. Went over it one more time and I'm looking at it thinking, oh my word, that's really, really flat. I was shocked to say the least. So what did I do? I tried it again just to be sure because the first one did so well. I looked at the second one. I'm like, oh my word, it really is flat. Now I'm not talking regular flat, I'm talking flat, flat. So I got out my third sample and I pressed it the way I would normally press one of my quilt blocks. I pressed the seams open, turned it back over from the back and then to the front, pressed it just like normal. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm, mine didn't do so well. Friends, you have to see it to believe it. Honestly, the flat iron worked better than even my wood clapper. And it only took two seconds to flatten it. I've been wanting to try one of these slotted cutting rulers for a while now. Today's the day. You're supposed to be able to cut strips and angles with your fabric using this ruler alone. And there are instructions with it. For me, I mostly wanted to just cut strips with this type of a ruler. First off, I laid it down and cut that bit off of the edge, you know, the uneven part. And that was a bit awkward. And I'm showing you in real time here how I dealt with that. And it just felt weird to me placing my rotary cutter into a slot and then slicing up. I don't know. Each slotted line was a half an inch away from the next slotted line. So you can literally tell how 
much just by counting the slots of like if you wanted a two and a half inch strip like I'm doing here, you would just count the slots. I did feel, however, as I was cutting, like I needed to hold down the slot just beyond my rotary cutter so that didn't lift up because I did have four layers of fabric. The verdict on this one, I do think this will help me cut quicker strips. Like with anything new, it'll take some getting used to. The only way to win some Sewing Channel merch is to email the secret word to the email address in that white box. Some of you are putting them down in the comments and you're not being entered. Did you find value in today's video? If you did, do me a favor and share this video with a friend or click on one of the videos that you see on the screen right now and we'll keep learning together. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.